Hi everyone, welcome to my channel and welcome back. I'm Jeannie and in today's video I'm going to be doing some nail art without using any gels. So if you have a gel allergy or you just don't like using gels, this video is for you because I'm going to be doing some color blocking. I'm going to be trying out some chrome as well as using some nail art striping stickers. So I'm going to be using all double dip products for this mani. So I just want to show you this color right here. This is the June birthday color, Kyanite. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. I'm not really sure. But I'm going to do some color blocking. It's going to go on my middle finger and thumb, but I am wearing peel base. So this is the peel base that I've been loving lately. So this is from Cirque Colors. This is a air dry peel base. And I really like it because it's kind of quicker drying and it works really well. So, and I also like that it also has the rounded brush. I really love a rounded brush and I wish all brushes were that rounded because it just makes it easier to get closer to your cuticle area without getting product on your skin. So that's what I've been using. And as far as protecting my peel base, because I will be using tape for my color block, if I applied the tape directly onto my nail, directly on top of my peel base, once I've got ready to peel off that tape, once I'm done with my color blocking, it would also peel up that peel base, which kind of defeats the purpose of having the peel base there. So in order to protect it, I'm going to do a layer of clear dip and that'll protect it so I can lay my tape on top of the clear dip and not disturb my peel base. So I've got my double dipped dip liquids as well as my double dipped clear dip. So I'm taking my dip base, I'm applying a thin even layer of dip base to my entire nail. So I'm going to do my entire nail. I'm not going to worry about just where I'm laying the tape and the color block is going to go on my thumb and middle finger so that's where I'll do my layer of clear dip powder. And the one thing I did learn when I first started doing this is that your tape will not stick to your clear dip just as is because it's kind of dusty and still a little grainy. The, the dustiness graininess of it just kind of peels off the tape. It doesn't stick to it. So I need to make sure that after I'm done with my clear dip, I give it a good scrub with a stiff scrub brush to ensure that I'm dusting off and getting off any of the excess clear. And then I activate my nail. So I activate that layer of clear dip and then my tape will stick to it. And I've tried with several different kinds of tape like striping tape, um, masking tape. I've got the color block tape, which I'll show you I'm using and washi tape. I've used a lot of different tapes and they will not stick to the clear dip powder. So I would say make sure that if you're protecting your peel base with a layer of dip or clear or whatever you're using, make sure it's activated in order to get your tape to stick. And side note, apologies if you can hear the vacuum running in the background. I do have my office door closed, but the Roomba is running outside my office. So you may be able to hear it because it does get a little loud. I went ahead and dipped my ring finger off camera just to save a little bit of time in this video, but the color I used is Glow Me Away, which is a light blue with a very fine glitter, and it does glow, so this is a really fun one. But I'm gonna start by showing you my index finger. So this is the June birthday color, Kyanite. Did I say that right? I Googled it and I'm still second guessing myself, so you'll have to let me know if I say that incorrectly. But this is the June birthday color. So for every month, Tracy creates a birthday dip special for that month, but she only creates one batch of it. So it's very limited. So this is the color for June. At the time I'm recording this voiceover, it is still available on the website. Hopefully it's still available by the time this video goes up. If it is, definitely run and get it. I'll leave a link for the dip down below in the description in case you wanna grab it. But I'm gonna do two dips of that on my index finger and I'm gonna use it in the color blocking as well. It's not a super chunky glitter. There are some larger white hex glitter pieces in here, but there's also some smaller white hex glitter pieces. There's some silver foils, but it's a really nice balance. It's not like jam packed full of any one thing. But even though I wouldn't consider it a chunky glitter, I did still pour over for my first layer because I didn't want to pick up any of those larger glitter pieces. And then for my second layer, I dipped the rest of my, not dipped, dumped the rest of my jar into my Chaos Gemerald. And for my second layer, I'm going to lay my finger flat in because that's the second layer is where I want to pick up more of those larger glitter pieces because I don't want to create any bulk. So I'd rather just concentrate my second layer on the larger glitter pieces. And you can see with the second dip that I actually get really good coverage with it. So I don't need any additional dips. It kind of gives me winter vibes, but I'm going to wear it anyway because it's a really good match for the Kyanite stone. But 
you know, just kind of that like steel blue color with the white glitter accents and then the silver foils. It kind of has that like cold winter vibes, but I absolutely love this. I just think it's so gorgeous. I went ahead and dipped my pinky off camera as well and I used Galaxy Eyes for that. So Galaxy Eyes is actually a magnetic cat eye dip powder. I don't do the cat eye method for this Manny, but I will show you chroming with it a little later on. And I try chroming for one of the first times ever without using gel liquid. So that is an interesting, so I'll kind of walk you through my process for that. But before we get to that, I wanna go into the color blocking. So I've got this color blocking tape that I used off of Amazon. This is my favorite to use because I think it sticks to the nail really well. And I think it's the perfect width because I don't want something too thick and I don't want something too thin. So I use this as kind of like when I wanna do like a vertical or horizontal line down the center of my nail. I find that this is like the perfect width to use. I try to find the center of my nail, but I do think looking at my nail now that I was a little bit off. But once I have it down the center or what I think is the center of my nail, I want to make sure that I'm rubbing that down. I want to make sure that there aren't any gaps, that it's sitting flush against my nail because I don't want any dip base to seep through because I want my color blocking line to be as clean as possible. So once I have my tape fully laid down, I'm going to go ahead and use my dip base to apply dip base to either side of that tape. So the two sides of my nail are going to be galaxy eyes and then where the tape is once I'm done with galaxy eyes is where I'm going to place the glitter. So the glitter is going to be down the center of my nail. So I removed most of the excess liquid from my dip base brush because I don't wanna flood my cuticles. I don't wanna get a bunch of product on my skin. I do overlap the tape a little bit, but I wanna overlap as little as possible because the more dip base you get on your, on your um, tape, the harder it is to peel it up when you're done. So I tried to avoid that as much as possible, but there is a little bit of overlap. And then once I have that dip base down, I wanna make sure I'm tapping off the excess powder. And then I wanna make sure that I'm cleaning up my cuticle area as well. Sometimes it's a little harder to get into like the crevices when you're doing like color blocking because the dip base brush is a bit larger. So it's harder to get in those smaller spaces. So what I do notice is I do miss some of that cuticle area. So I decided for my second layer that I'm just gonna do one side at a time rather than doing both sides at one time. And that way I can really focus on making sure I've got everything covered because I don't wanna do more than the two dips. So I'm gonna go ahead, do the one side, dip into galaxy eyes, and then I'll do the other side and then dip into galaxy eyes. And while I'm doing this, did I even explain to you why I'm doing a color block for this Manny? Because there actually is a reason this time. So for every month, the Double Dipped Ambassadors, we do a birthday month collab. So for the ambassadors that have a birthday during that month, they decide on what theme they want, whether it's a color, whether it's a style, whatever it may be. And then on a certain day, we all post our Mannies. So this Manny is for the June birthday collab. I think the only ambassador with a June birthday is Allie. So she is the color block queen. So of course she requested a color block. So that's why I'm doing this Manny. So it'll be posted today. So I thought that was a perfect reason to do this video because it, I think it is actually her birthday. So I don't know if you watch my videos or not, but if you do, happy birthday, Allie. So that's why I'm doing a color block. So I'm not doing the color block justice. I mean, the crazy design she does is insane. I'm going to do a little bit of a design on my thumb, but still nothing crazy because I just don't have the patience for it. Once I'm done with my second dip, I'm going to go ahead and dust off the excess powder and then I'm going to very carefully peel off that tape. I do have that layer of clear dip powder, but I still don't want to rip up the tape because I could risk ripping up the dips that I did. I'm not really so concerned about the clear, but I don't want to rip up my galaxy eyes. So I'm just very slowly peeling off that tape to reveal my color block. So you can see the lines are pretty crisp, so I'm pretty happy with that. But I do want to crispen them up a little bit more. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the flat end of my cuticle pusher and anywhere like I feel like it's just a little crooked, I'm going to just push in a little bit before my dip base is fully dry. 
just to make sure my lines are as crisp as possible, which it probably doesn't make that big of a difference anyway, because I end up using some striping tape as well, just to hide any imperfections. But I don't know, I think it's just habit that I wanna clean up the lines a little bit more before I dip into my glitter. So once I have that cleaned up, I'm gonna take my dip base and I wanna remove most of my base from my brush. So I just want a little bit of base because we're just gonna do that strip down the center of the nail where there isn't galaxy eyes, where I didn't dip where the tape was. So I'm just very carefully applying dip base down that line. And that's why I like this um, color blocking tape is because I think it's about the width of my dip base brush. So I don't have to worry about getting into like a tighter space. I think it kind of fits perfectly. I am gonna do two layers of this because I want the surface of my nail to be even and because I did two layers of galaxy eyes, I'm gonna do two layers of kyanite just so that it's even. I mean, I could even it out with clear dip, but I'd rather just have, cause I want more glitter anyway. So I just applied my dip base down the center of my nail where I did my first layer. And then I'm gonna lay my finger flat into kyanite to pick up more of those glitter and foil pieces. After I dipped, I did realize that I did go a little past the line and onto galaxy eye. So I'm just gonna take that same cuticle pusher, the flat end of it, and I'm just gonna push that in while the dip base is still wet. And the striping tape will help cover that up as well, but I, I was able to push it in before the dip base fully dried, so you couldn't tell that I had overlapped galaxy eyes. And I didn't really pick up any of the larger glitter pieces or larger pieces of foil, which I wanted to make it pop a little bit more, but I didn't wanna do a third layer. So I'm just gonna do a little bit of glitter placement. So I just applied dip base to the entire middle of my nail as well, just because I wasn't sure where I wanted to place them. And I'm just gonna individually place pieces. So I just dipped my precision tool into the wet dip base and then I'm picking up little pieces of glitter, little pieces of foil, and I'm just kind of placing them randomly along that line just so I have just a little pop of that glitter. So I'm gonna let you finish watching this. I'll let you watch me doing the color block on my thumb and then I'll be back.
Hopping back on for a quick minute just to explain what I'm doing. So I decided because my color blocking for the glitter isn't just a straight line, that it does have those curves to it, that it might be easier to use my liner brush rather than the dip base brush just because it's a little more precise because it has those angles to it. So what I did is I'm just using like, I think this is the cap to my jelly stamper to be honest. So I just applied a little dollop of dip base onto that just to make it easier to pick up the dip base with my liner brush. And so I'm just applying the dip base to that center of the nail where I have the color blocked line. And then I'm dipping into the glitter. And then I'm gonna do the same thing for layer two. I wanna make sure that I'm dusting off the excess powder. And I did notice at like the sidewall of the left side of my nail that I did miss some of that glitter. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to take a little bit more dip base, put the dollop of that onto my cap, and then use my liner brush to pick up some of that dip base and apply it over the area where I want the glitter to be. I went ahead and capped my nails in clear, activated and filed and buffed off camera. So here's how the Manny's looking. It was super quick and easy because these powdered lays super flat, but I wanted to do something a little bit special, a little extra for this birthday Manny. So I decided I wanted to try some chrome without using gels. So my thought process on this is you can do chrome stamping so you can use a sticky stamping polish. And then once you stamp on the image, you can kind of dab on the chrome so I was thinking, can you do that without stamping? Like, do you really have to have a stamped image? Can I just stamp on the chrome? So that's what we're gonna try. So what I'm doing is I'm using Galaxy Eyes to chrome because it is a chromable powder, as well as a magnetic cat eye dip powder. But I'm taking a stamper that I don't love because I don't wanna ruin a good stamper. And I'm just rubbing that chrome, that powder onto my jelly stamper because that's what I'm going to use to transfer it onto my nail. So I'm starting with that just to make sure I have that ready so you can see how beautiful is that chrome. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my sticky base coat. This one is from Maniology, so it's an air dry polish. And on my middle nail where I have the galaxy eyes, so either side of kyanite on my sidewalls, that's where I'm going to apply my sticky stamping polish because that's where I want the chrome to adhere to. And I'm just hoping at this point that it actually works. So the trick about Sticky Base Coat is you can't use it when it's too wet or else it'll just make, be messy. So you have to wait till it gets to like this tacky point. You don't want it too wet. You don't want it too dry. Once it's dry, it's no longer sticky. So maybe like 10, 15 seconds, it gets to that tacky point where you're ready to do whatever you need to on top of the sticky base coat, whether it's stamping, water slide decal, or in my case, trying out the chrome. So I'm just gonna wait a minute and I'm gonna watch it. So when it stops looking wet, when it starts looking a little dried down, that's when I'm gonna start. So I'm just patting on my stamper just to apply that chrome so it'll transfer onto the sticky base coat. I feel like it's kind of hard to tell on this nail just because the sides are skinnier, but you will see on my thumb, it'll show up a little, lot better. And so I'm just taking a little bit of alcohol and just wiping off the kyanite area just because some chrome got on there. So I want to clean it up a little bit, but you know, no big deal. It just wipes off with a little bit of rubbing alcohol. So I'm going to do the same thing for my thumb as well, but I want to reapply the chrome to my stamper before I do that.
I can't believe the chroming actually worked and I'm so happy. While it's not perfect, I think it is a great alternative if you don't like using gels or if you have a gel allergy, I definitely recommend giving it a try because it was super easy to do. So the last thing I'm gonna do is I wanna tie the look together. I wanna clean up the color block. So I'm gonna use some striping tape stickers. These are ones I get from iGel. These are the hollow silver stickers. I don't like regular striping tape. It is just a pain and really difficult to use, but these stickers are super easy. So I went ahead and did my middle finger because that's easy, but I wanted to show you this difficult one because I have like the angles on my thumb. So I'm just having to cut like little strips and just kind of make sure. So I'm cutting it a little bit longer than I need and then cutting it down because I'm having them kind of like overlap to get them where I need them. but. It was a little more tricky, but I think it was worth the time just because I felt like it needed that little bit of tape to tie that look together and make everything look clean. If you know of an easier or quicker way to do this, let me know down below in the comments because this did take me quite a while. Once I'm done with the stickers, I need to protect them because I will be using dip top coat. And if I went straight in with activator, it would strip the color off the stickers and it would actually probably strip the chrome. So I'm gonna use my smudge free top coat from Maniology. This is an air dry polish. I'm just gonna apply that to the entire nail and let that dry. Usually it takes about maybe five minutes. It's a pretty quick drying polish, but I did that to my thumb and also my middle finger. And once that's completely dry, I'm going to apply a final layer of activator to all my nails. So on the nails that have the smudge free top coat, I want to kind of float the activator. I don't want to drag the brush over that smudge free top coat because that could pull up the smudge free top coat. So I want to keep that intact. So I'm just kind of floating it. And then once I've got the activator on all my nails, I'm going to wait a full two minutes before I go in with my dip top coat. For my first layer of dip top coat, I'm going to apply it in two to three swipes on each nail. I want to make them fairly quick. I don't want to linger on the nail because there could be excess activator that could harden my brush and I could also contaminate my whole bottle of dip top coat. 
in between each nail, I want to make sure that I'm wiping my brush on a lint-free wipe before I'm returning it to the bottle. And actually with the double dipped top coat, it's really hard to contaminate. So I don't really have to do this. I just like to keep a habit of doing it just in case I'm using like a different brand. I don't want to contaminate it. So I just like to keep it a habit to do that. Once I'm done with my first layer, I'm going straight in with my second layer and that's when I can take more strokes if needed. I wanna make sure that my entire nail is covered, everything is even, although this is very self-leveling. And I also wanna make sure that I'm capping my free edge. As always, I'm going to finish off my Manny by rehydrating my cuticles and you know Scales Over Mermaid is my go-to so I've got my cuticle oil in the scent breather and this scent is just so lovely. It's just, just a nice relaxing calming type scent. It kind of gives me like spa vibes like it's I think it's perfect for like if you need to unwind if you want to de-stress or maybe even just lather up before you head to bed just because it's that type of scent. My skin always feels super dry after I finish off a mani, so you'll notice that I always put on a ton of cuticle oil. But the thing that I love about Scales of a Mermaid is that it absorbs super quickly but leaves me super hydrated. So I can just apply a bunch and it'll just absorb and make my skin super soft. So that pretty much wraps up today's video and I'm super happy that I was able to accomplish this entire mani without using any gels. While I do like to use gels, I like to reduce my exposure to it because I don't want to risk having a gel allergy. And I know a lot of you do have a gel allergy or you don't like using gels. You just want to use your dip products or air dry polish products. So this is a really great alternative. While the chrome wasn't perfect, I think given the alternative of risking a gel allergy, I think it's worth giving a try because it was so easy to do. So I hope this video was helpful. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, I'd appreciate it if you gave this video a thumbs up. It lets me know to continue creating content like this. And it also helps YouTube recommend me to others, which helps grow my channel. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. I upload content every Monday and Thursday at 9.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. As always, I appreciate you being here. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!